Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of I Wish, a series in which I buy things off Wish and see if they're any good. That's pretty much it. Keeping consistent with my series of buying clone phones off Wish, I had set myself a bit of a goal. I wanted to buy the most expensive clone phone off Wish and I thought, if I spend more on a clone, they might give me something slightly better. I think that thought process is a little stupid, but you know, just take my word for it. And so I searched up on Wish and I ended up finding this right here. Now I tried finding other listings for this on Wish at the time, which was 10 days ago, which is when I originally purchased this. It took 10 days from China to Australia, this item from Wish, which is just amazing. That's an absolute miracle for Wish. Now there's another listing that's popped up on Wish. So there's two listings of this certain phone and to the unsuspecting eye, you might actually think that it's legit Samsung Galaxy Note 10 Plus. But the one red flag is the fact that it says Note 10 Pro, which um, as far as I know doesn't exist. But uh, it's, it's a Note 10 Pro, so that means it must be better than the real thing, right? No, it's not. Of course it's not. But with specifications promised to us, such as 8GB of RAM and 128GB of storage, what could go wrong? I mean, the photos look pretty good. You know, it kind of is looking good. A 2230 by 1320 6.8 inch screen with a 19 by 9 aspect ratio. You know, it seems pretty good. It looks like it has three cameras on the back and everything. And the best part is that it says it has a 4,800 milliamp hour battery, which the last one said that and that wasn't true. But let's just, you know, keep on going. Now, while the specs listed on the listing that I bought this one from aren't really, you know, that great as you can see here. It's just fairly basic and pretty much what we expected. It's the other listing that I found, which popped up after I bought this one, which is cheaper, which kind of sucks. It is actually quite funny to read, but this is slightly different. But uh, resolution, front 800 MA makes you more beautiful. Beautiful. The internet, 4G, the internet mode, the internet dual SIM card, 4G LTE. Yeah, okay, that's fair. Uh, there's also micro USB 2, so I wonder if we will get micro USB or if it'll be USB C in here. Hmm, not too sure. But all the pictures are exactly the same on the listing that I got this from. Oh, except for the colors black, colorful, and white, which is. That's. Yeah, okay. If we're going to talk about color, the magical twilight, let your differences shine. We are always excited when we find novel ways to combine color and light that produce awe-inspiring effects. This has led to some truly unique color options for the M30 each with a stunning interplay between light and shade. Okay. 23 megapixel front camera, crispy and clear. <laughs> a big circle. Yeah, yeah, it'll look something like that. Then we also have zero photo sensitive face recognition. Uh, that's probably gonna scan my facial features and probably use for fake IDs or something like that, who knows. Just a quick note also, this screen is an Infinity, Not an infinity display, it's an Infinity. That's uh, it's close enough. It's just a couple of letters off, you know. It's fine, perfectly fine. Now this item cost me $196 Australian plus $18 shipping, then minus $9.80 because they gave me some sort of random discount code, meaning that it was $204 Australian, which is, I'm not too sure what that is in US or Euro or Pound or anything like that, but I'll uh, display it here for you. And also the price of $205 with uh, crossed out $2,347 Australian. Uh, we have two reviews that are one star. And those two reviews say, that they are too small, that the phone's too small, because Wish just uses a star system that's based on clothing, I guess. So um, feel free to interpret that any way you want to. With all that being said, I have a parcel to open up and see what we get. And just a quick note before we continue on, because I know the comments are gonna be filled with this, I'm getting corrective surgery on my thumbs because yes, they're um, both pretty damaged. So um, that's why I'm hiding them with band-aids. I'm very, very sorry if you don't like this. Um, there's timestamps. There's always timestamps in the description. You can skip along because I ramble, sorry. Okay, let's go. Wish stands for one thing. I like to say that it stands for wish. Wish I shouldn't have because you know, sometimes you just wish you shouldn't have bought stuff off Wish. Look, Wish is okay for some things, but for the most part, like, honestly, just stay away from Wish. It's it's not that good. Sometimes, look, just sometimes you can get little shitty items that are good, but other times, just, just, no. And also, to clear things up as to why I'm buying clones, it's more for the whole science, I guess. I just want to see what these things are and all that sort of good stuff. And if you're genuinely here because you want to buy this off Wish, don't buy it. Straight up, just don't buy it. Just 
go for something like Xiaomi or Oppo or Nokia or something like that. They're much better than what this will likely be. But anyways, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. So in a generic garbage bag, we have this, which is a generic white box, which brings back flashbacks to when I first um, had a look at the P20 Pro and the P30 Pro clone. They both had this. See, the S10 clone that I got off Doom, that actually had a nice box, whereas this is just, um, yeah, okay. The 20th of the 10th, 2019, which is about when they would have shipped it, so this is the shipping label. I don't know if I'll keep this in the video, but there you go. Otherwise, we have the, oh, never mind, uh, Note 10 Plus 6.8, and it says something there. Now, in my previous P30 Pro video, I showed a European charger on camera, and I said, this is not for my country. The reason why I had that is because in the selection for the P30 Pro, I could only choose a European or US plug, and I just chose European because just why not? And a lot of you didn't like that, but that's okay, that's okay. All right. Let's unbox this thing. Okay, here we go. Uh, am I expecting it to be good? It better be for $200 Australian. <laughs> or shrouded in mystery. All right, let's do a very quick cut on what we get in the box. And there we go, that's it. Now obviously we've got the device, which has a uh, lovely looking sticker on there. I can't wait to get to that. We have a user's manual, which I believe is just the exact same one that we've seen before. How do you send a text message? How do you not send a text message? What do you do when your phone explodes? I have no idea. Um, does it have anything funny? No, no, probably not. Uh, yep, okay. Actually, this user manual seems um, pretty straightforward and straight to the point, which is not what I do. Uh, we get a case for the phone, which, yeah, is always nice for them to include a case. Is it 6.8 inch? All right. Will it actually fit a Note 10 Plus? I'm not too sure either, but that's there. We get headphones. Look, earphones are earphones. If you're really cheap, you know, these will probably do the job just fine. But if you're picky, well, you know, so be it. Now... This is actually for my country, this plug here. There you go. It is a 5 volt, 2 amp one. It is a travel adapter. Yep, yep, output, yep, all that good stuff. It is taken off a Samsung charger as per usual. Now, as I said in the P30 Pro video as well, using one of these is kind of not really safe because like they're not, are these really certified or anything like that? I think it's just a bunch of crap. Double insulation there and all that sort of stuff. You know, yeah, yeah, it may be fine, but if this ends up catching fire, you know, like, who do you blame? It's a bit of a grey area, to be fairly honest. But at least it's for my country. I'm just going to do a quick dissection. Here we go. That's what's in it. That's it. Um, it's very, very light. There's not a lot of weight to it. So, up to you guys. You can risk it. If you want, don't flame me in the comments saying that you used one that caught fire and it's my fault. So anyways, uh, we get a Type-C USB cable, which is pretty cool. That means it's Type-C, which is great. And I always need one of these. I'm pretty much just paying for this at this point in time, aren't I? I'm just, yeah, okay. Uh, foam, crap. Uh, Sim eject tool, which, yep, always useful. Need one of them. And then the device itself. Okay. Okay. All right. Oh, look at... That shimmery, shiny. Whoa. <laughs> What's with the crown? I think this is going to be a little bit redundant here, but I think this is one of the legitimate fake Note 10 clones because this here covers very important information. So we're just going to go ahead and take the very important information off the back here. Here we go. Does it say Samsung? Does it say Samsung? Does it say Samsung? Oh, what? That's not fair. Oh. Well, um, if you want to stare into that kaleidoscopic uh, void, there it is. Now, I actually picked up a Galaxy A50 on the weekend as well for 150 bucks, which, uh, it's not too bad. It's just got a uh, pretty cracked screen, but that's okay. Everything still functions perfectly, so yeah, I've got that to the side if I ever need it. And on the back here, we have the triple camera setup. Guess which one's the real one, and guess which ones are the fake one. I'm going to say that's the real one, and these are fake. And that also looks like one there, but yeah, okay. Now, even though this cool kaleidoscopic LSD-inducing back cover here uh, is a fingerprint magnet, it's still pretty cool, though. 
And size-wise, this is more of a Note 10 clone instead of a Note 10 Plus because this is actually smaller than my Note 9, which I'm recording this video with now. So yeah, more of a Note 10 than a Note 10 Plus. On the bottom of the phone here, we have the Type-C USB connection. We also have the Okay, you don't just, um, you know, you can't click it. Now, here's the S Pen here. There's the but. The button doesn't do anything. Uh, this is, um, oh, maybe it actually does something. I don't know. There's no branding on it or anything like that. And it, it's just, it's just a piece of something. Ah, oh, look. It's literally just one of those old capacitive styluses you just... Yeah, okay. Cool S Pen. Uh, but anyways, yeah, now there's a hole for that. Um, we have the speaker grill there, we have a microphone connection, antenna bands, all that good stuff. On the side we have the power button as well as the volume rockers, antenna bands. And also just up here we have the SIM card slash SD card tray. And it'll be very interesting to see the configuration in there as well. And yeah, this side here is completely plain. So weird not having this power button here like on the older Samsung phones. But anyways, uh, moving to the front here, we have this obnoxiously big just circle right there. Is it a full screen display with that there? Time will tell. Does it have a flipping notch? Also, we have uh, menu, home, back, power lock, volume. Okay, that's cool. All right. Here it is, the moment, why am I going over there? It's here. And now for the absolute moment of truth, is this actually going to be, like, I can't see. It looks like it's in the middle of the screen. Like, I don't know, let's let's see, folks. Is it a welcome? Is it dead? No, it's alive. Holy crap, it act, dude, it actually has the hole punch. No way. That's, it, breezy cloud. I don't know what it is. Just take my word for it. Um, what? Hang on. That is a legit camera. A legit hole punch. Ca it's a. It's a lot bigger than the uh, Note 10 ones, but it's there, man. I am genuinely impressed at this point in time. Also, the phone is unfortunately made of plastic as well. So this is glass, and this is also glass, obviously, but the phone here has a plastic frame, which, you know, so be it. Oh, I keep <laughs> pressing the button over here. I don't mean to do that. All right, here it is. The Note 10 Plus from Wish in all its glory. Um, <laughs> it, it has CPU-C installed by default. Oh, come on. Let's Let's see. This app was built for an older version of Android, man, at work, okay. Yep, 10 cores, yep, uh-huh. Note 10. Okay, 60 gig of RAM. <laughs> okay, we got a telltale sign there. Available RAM, 512 meg. <laughs> so, uh, that straight off the bat, I don't think this is going to be uh, anything super spectacular. And uh, 9.1, and non-existent version of Android right there. All right, let's go ahead and just have a look at the general functionality of it. I mean, I gotta say, for that gimmick there, that's worth it. That's pretty cool. I didn't expect it to be like that. I thought it was gonna be software, um, but no, it's it's literally hardware. I can see that. So if we tear this device down, that will be very interesting to see what it actually looks like in there. So, but anyways, yeah, swiping up, we get just basic applications. It's not a lot here, to be fairly honest. Camera settings, calendar, contacts, Samsung One UI interface, which is based on Android Nine, which all looks good. In files here, sound recorder, email, my files, FM radio. Uh, there's no headphone jack, which is like the real deal, so that's okay. Well, it's not okay because I miss a headphone jack, but anyways. Uh, we have S Note on here. I don't even think this is legit S Note. I think it's... God, that looks old. Is this... Hang on. I haven't seen S Note looking like this since, like, Android 4.4.2. So, um... Uh... Sure. Uh... Oh, okay. Uh, so, um, it's supposed to say Hello YouTube, but it kind of doesn't really look like that. It looks like, uh, Hell... 
Yeah, okay. Uh, can we just draw a little smiley face? That is going to give me nightmares. All right, cool. No worries, uh, this S Pen is totally useless. <laughs> That was easy. I just love that. CPUZ is preloaded by default. It's like, no, we're going to make sure that you know the specs are legit. Calendar, contact, clock, settings, calculator, Snow Sim Toolkit, CPUZ, notes. This is like bare bones Android, which is surprising. Anyways, uh, we do have an edge screen here as well, which works. Yeah, that works just like the real deal. And the corners are actually curved as well. While the screen itself isn't quite curved... It sort of curves just around the glass here, so the screen's probably flat. It's not a curved AMOLED display. But that's all good. Let's jump right into settings here and see what we got. So, yeah, it actually looks pretty much like um, Samsung One UI's um, settings menu. So, that looks good. Do we get any NFC or anything like that? It doesn't look like it. Um, I will go ahead and connect to my Wi-Fi network, and then we'll continue on as per usual. Now, I've just connected it to my Wi-Fi network, but I just want to quickly do something. Okay, so we have the SIM tray here, which is just made of a bit of plastic, but eh, so be it. So I've populated the SIM tray with just one SIM card and an SD card, and we'll see if it comes up with anything, if it's 4G. Okay, now coming to the SIM status settings, we can see that it is only running UMTS or HSPA, which is only 3G. So this is not a 4G device, unfortunately which is to be expected, so that's a bit of a letdown there. I thought it might have been 4G, but oh, well, doesn't matter. Now, I haven't mentioned it previously, but this is quite a heavy device. It's pretty, yeah. All right, settings, come here. Network and internet, we've already had a look at. It's nothing special. Connected devices is just Bluetooth. Apps and notifications, which we'll see. Well, 25 apps. Let's just see what's, what's rocking on here. Yes, it keeps... It keeps doing that. I wonder if it's got stereo speakers as well. We'll have to try that. It's looking fairly stock in here so far. There's something called ZX Launcher, which is probably just, yeah, the launcher, skin, whatever it is. Um, but otherwise, yeah, okay. Battery, 4,800 milliamp. Uh, should last until about 22.15. So uh, less than two hours. That's fair. Last full charge nine days ago. Oh, okay. So they must have tested it before they sent it out to me. So, okay. Oh, maybe they preloaded CPU-Z first. Just, yeah, they, they won't know. If they check, they won't know. Uh, display, brightness level. Yeah, yeah. Um, navigation bar. We can change this here. You can actually use the full screen gestures like the S10 and Note 10 as well, which is quite interesting. But I'm used to the usual navigation buttons. Uh, edge screen as well. We can also, yeah configure that, which, as I said, this actually does really look like I'm actually using the Samsung One UI at the moment. Just everything here looks really good. Uh, the always on display, let's see what that looks like. Yeah, looks fair. Let's see what happens. Uh, if, oh, we got to try the fingerprint. Got to try the fingerprint. Forgot. All right. Uh, sound, which, yep. Ah, do we have, oh, over the horizon. Is this the actual over the horizon? Okay, um, yep, that's it. But look, the speaker actually doesn't sound too bad in it, so, you know. Um, sound enhancement. Is this the best order or whatever? Best order. So there's no sound enhancement. Maybe because there's no headphone jack. They're like, eh, who cares? <laughs> You're not going to be needing any of that stuff, so that's gone. Uh, wallpaper. Obviously, the stock wallpapers straight from a Note 10. Hey, that looks pretty nice, i got to admit. Now, from my point of view, the screen resolution actually looks fairly good. It doesn't look that bad at all. And it's a full screen display with, you know, minimal bezels. So it would be surprising if this is actually more than a 720p display. But yeah, let's keep going. Storage, 128 gig, which, yep. Yeah. All right, I'm going to take a take a guesstimate here. And I'm going to say it's probably, probably a 16 gig in here. 16 gig of storage. And my SD card's 8 gig, so that's fine. Uh, security and location is all the usual stuff. Screen lock. Aha. Fingerprint. Here we go. For the best experience, hold and face the phone. All right. Let's hold it. Uh, I have a feeling I'll be here for quite a long time. Uh, we'll be right back. I have successfully enrolled my fingerprint into this thing. Now I'm going to just jump to my uh, fairly damaged A50 here. And when you use the fingerprint on this, you can see that the green light there for the optical sensor lights up to try and find your fingerprint. And then it obviously unlocks the device. This one here though, 
There's no optical stuff going on here. Oh, come on. Even being fake, you're so slow. Come on, usually, <laughs> usually these work. Oh, oh. Um, okay. Either this is a really terrible fake fingerprint sensor, or it's actually one built in there and it just doesn't work properly. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna unroll another finger and see if I can get this to work, because this is really interesting now, because usually I would make a joke and go, ah, oh, yeah, it's a fake one, look how fast it is, but it's actually, like, kind of not working, which is concerning. All right, I keep trying over and over again, and... Never mind. I actually gave the middle finger to this phone and enrolled this, but uh, that doesn't even work. It worked with this, though. You've seen it. It only has worked once. It refuses to work any other time, so I'm, I'm not too sure if this is actually a legit one or if it's just software-based and it just doesn't want to work. Who knows? Now, the battery's also dropping considerably fast for a 4,800 milliamp hour battery, but uh, uh, never mind. Oh, look at that lag. Look at that lag happening there. Oof. Now, you can only enroll one finger at a time on this, and so that's what I've done. I've enrolled this one and this one, and I enrolled this one last. Sorry, giving the middle finger to you. Uh, and it didn't work, and it worked with the... Uh, yeah, so... No idea, but let's just say it doesn't work. Let's just say that. Okay, I'm legitimately going to try the face unlock. There we go. Face unlock actually works, so I'm I'm impressed. Well done, Wish Note 10. Accounts, uh, we can add a Google account and that's it. So obviously no Samsung account, but that's okay. Uh, accessibility, all the usual garbage. Google. All the usual stuff that no one probably ever uses. And finally, system settings. Uh, gestures. Prevent ringing. Okay. Uh, languages and inputs. Yep, fair. Date and time, backup, and advanced system update. Let's see if it actually can get an update. This never usually works. Yeah, 9.1. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh, about phone. We have Note 10 Plus, we have phone number unknown unknown, SIM status, yes, that is my SIM card in there. Model and hardware, Note 10 Plus, with an actual serial number, fair. Okay, IMEI is both there, 9.1. Now, some people said if you do this, you get the little Easter egg. Oh, hang on, that didn't work. So you get the Easter egg, that's Pi, but, but, you can easily put the Pi Easter egg onto older versions of Android you know, because they stuff around with the firmware and all that sort of stuff, they can do it. But we will tell by the SDK version number of Android what this will be. And then we have the build number here, which Note 10 plus ZCU1ASC1. So if that means anything, feel free. Right, so that is pretty much it for everything there. Um, obviously, we don't have Chrome installed. We do not have Chrome installed. Unfortunately, we have to stick to the stock browser, which is asking to take pictures and videos, which we're going to deny. We're going to deny it recording audio. We're also going to deny it uh, to find accounts on the device because, oh, okay, so I have to let it do that. I want Google Chrome on this thing. <laughs> I don't trust that. Okay, secretly the government could be watching me, so I really want Google Chrome to be on here. Oh, hang on. I'll, uh, I'll do this. All right, let's pop on the... Uh, Good old P30 Pro client. If there's a Wish ad, I'm going to laugh. I think the stereo speakers in this. <laughs> Did you? Yes. There is a Wish ad. <laughs> I'm sorry, all you guys, about the... Oh, God, that's loud. Okay. Um, let's pop it into full screen mode. You guys aren't going to believe this, but this is actually dual speakers. This is obviously the louder one here. The earpiece one actually works just ever so slightly it does work unless the sound from the bottom one is sort of coming from there to there maybe i don't know but it works okay so just playing youtube here it is getting pretty laggy it is uh not the smoothest experience ever so this is playing at 480p it works sorry 360p it's playing at let's bump it up to uh set all oh, 720p that's what we can go to <laughs> Look how laggy it's getting. <laughs> wow, okay. Positives. 
has stereo speakers. Sort of. Uh, negatives, it can't run YouTube, and it's getting extremely hot. Like, I'm, my hands are sweating from holding this thing because it's just so damn hot. The back glass is probably just going to pop off any second. Also, I noticed up here, just near the SIM card tray, you can see just a hole there, just a random ass hole. Oh no, it's just, it's an imperfection in the uh, plastic. That's fair. You know it's from Wish now. I'm going to try uh, Mick Gordon's Ribbon Tear from the 2016 Doom game, just to see what it sounds like. Which, it's quite loud. Obviously, this is doing most of the speaker work, but it works. It works, and it's quite loud, so that's fine. But, uh, yeah, battery level is slowly dwindling down, and, uh, yeah. So, honestly, at this point in time, I'm really wondering to myself about the camera. So, let's go ahead and open up the camera and see what happens. This is very basic. In settings here, we have a picture size of 18 megapixels or 21 megapixels. Ooh, ooh. I don't think I can do anything to change it. Nope. I would say, hang on, is it the top camera? Yeah, I'm correct, it's the top camera. The other cameras do absolutely nothing. But if we change the front one, there it is. There it is right there. It actually works. That is crazy. I didn't actually think there'd be the hole punch camera, but there it is. It works, man. It works. Also, looking at it, it's actually very clear, which is surprising. Well, I'll have to, we'll have to test it out. I mean, it looks like a pretty decent camera in there, so yeah. Um, let's switch to video. Looks the same. Uh, we have EIS. Video quality is 720p. We have VGA and QVGA and uh, QCIF, if you want. Um, okay, that's interesting. <laughs> All right, uh, let me test the camera quality and I will be right back because this will be very interesting. Because we have no beauty mode or anything. We have like nothing. It is just a complete bare bones stock camera. So well, we'll see what it can do. And this is the rear camera test for the Note 10 clone. And this is uh, 720p with electronic image stabilization on, and uh, it's pretty choppy. And we have no autofocus either. When life gives you lemons, I just leave them on the ground. And this is the front camera quality for the Note 10 clone. 640 by 480 looks all right I guess probably won't look as good when I get to editing but so be it okay so hopefully if all has went well you have just seen some photos and some video taken from this thing uh, it is night time that I'm recording so there's no point in even trying um, it looks the front camera looks the best but the rear camera looks uh, and the fact that it's only 720p is also uh, but I won't say much about it, I'll just put a caption here to say what sums up the camera and all that sort of stuff. I won't say anything. We're not going to judge a book by its cover here, <laughs> even though we kind of already know. Alright, the next thing we're going to do now is start installing the applications. This is the fun part, which we're probably like half an hour in already and we're only just getting to this. But we want to see what's running inside of this unit. Maybe we won't get to see the full specifications using the applications that I do have, but tearing it down will absolutely guarantee us you know, to know what's inside of here. So let me go ahead and start installing them. We'll start with the usual ones, Ansuzu, uh, CPU-Z, and the third one, which is called CPU. I'll link all the ones I use in the description below and the first pinned comment. I think you can only pin one comment anyways. I don't know, YouTube does really weird things. CPU-Z is actually installed on this phone by default and is built into the firmware. Won't be using CPU-Z then. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to try answer to. We'll go with CPU-Z again and have a look through that properly. And then we'll use this application here finally to see all the specs in all their glory, if it shows it. So let's try answer to first. Uh, we'll just confirm all that. Sorry about all the fingerprints on the screen. I've cleaned this thing multiple times during this video. All right, info. Here we go. 
maybe. <laughs> Samsung Note 10 Plus, 9.1, 32-bit. Tell me if I'm wrong, but there's no 32-bit version of uh, Android 9, let alone Android 9.1. Anyways, we have an MT6580WP, okay, and Mali 400 MP GPU, a 720p screen, which, look, it's not too bad. I actually think that the screen resolution here is better than the iPhone XR, I believe. Well, anyways, 1560 by 720, not too bad. We do have an 8 megapixel camera listed here, that's okay. There we go, RAM is 1 gig with available 334 meg, so we have 1 gig of RAM. Yep, system storage says 128, so I'm probably going to assume that it's going to be 16 gig, if it's 8 gig. Hit me over the head, please. Uh, MT6580, core information, we have a quad-core processor. We'll see what this says here. Isn't a MediaTek 6580 like five years old or something? Five or six years old? Uh, well, anyways, it can't display core information, so that's a good sign. All right, so back to display. Yep, Mali 400, 720p display. Multi-touch, let's just try this. It's only a six-point multi-touch. Oh, which is actually really weird. I've never heard of a six-point multi-touch, but okay. Uh, rear camera is 8 megapixel, and the front one is 8 megapixel. That's fair. Uh, battery level is 59%. Temperature is 37 degrees, which, yep. Android 9.1 32-bit, but the SDK version is 28, which corresponds with Android Pi. But it's definitely not running Android Pi. I mean, if it is, um, you know, obviously that's my bad there, but I don't think it would be. Uh, we have access, Wi-Fi for network, yay. NFC, not supported, and then a whole bunch of other sensors that aren't supported. Heart rate, all that sort of stuff. Proximity, so that's good. Uh, so, yeah, that's fair. Let's go to the next application. We'll do CPU-Z, what they've built onto this. So, yeah, it says 10 cores here. Yeah, fair. Adreno 540, yeah, okay. Um, Note 10 Beyond. This is a Beyond Note 10 Plus. Okay, that's... Uh, that's that's fine. MT6595, 9.1, and then total RAM 6 gig with available RAM 255. Makes sense, doesn't it? Now, there's no battery capacity listed in here, so 4,800 milliamp hours, I very much doubt it. Probably, I don't know, 1,800 is a rough guess. Uh, the sensors are there, and about. All right, next one. All right, here we go. So we have Samsung Note 10 Plus, <laughs> manufacturer is Samsung. The board is an MSM Nile 6580. Android version name is Pi. It's actually running Pi. So what I said previously with the uh, whole Easter egg thing sometimes being hacked, which is true, uh, doesn't apply to this because it's actually running Android Pi. Just says 9.1. So paying premium for a device on Wish gets you something that has a hole punch camera, which is cool an actual Android Pi. Can I really argue with that? Probably not. And the system on chip is the MT6580, four cores, all the usual stuff, Mali 400 GPU. Um, used internal memory is 16 gig and it still says 128 gigs. Hmm. So this is really strange now because it could be one gig with 128 gig of ROM, which is just ridiculous. I'm going to try another application and we'll see what happens. But RAM, uh, there it is, 1 gig. Confirmed, 1 gig here. The screen size is 9.5 inches. Holy shit. Okay, fair enough. That's not true, but that's okay. Uh, the battery... It... <laughs> the battery... Holy fuck. 2,433,000 milliamp hour battery in here. Holy shit, that's going to power a Tesla for about a millennia. Holy hell. Um... That's not true, but let's just pretend it is. <laughs> the rear camera says 15 megapixels, and the front one is 8 megapixels. So, well, 16 and 8. So it's hard to know what we're really dealing with here. There's a couple of things that are a little bit confusing. So we're going to have to see. I'm going to try another application anyways, and we'll see. Okay, sorry for the absolute shitty footage here. I've kind of packed my tripod away because I thought I was done for the night, and then I found this application called Droid Info. And it shows everything, including the 8 gig internal memory. Well, I'd say it'd be 8 gig ROM. Um, I mean, it wouldn't be 6. It'd be 8, most likely. So it'd be 1 gig plus 8 gig. That's what's running in here. This is actually my micro SD card. But that there, internal, 
I'd say 8 gig ROM because Android Pie takes up a bit. And then, yeah, available is 2.9 gig. 1 gig of RAM and 16 megapixels for the rear camera as well as uh, 8 for the front. So I'm going to go off this and say 16 back and 8 front. And that's it. So I think we finally know what is inside of this thing. I'm going to try this application on some other clone phones and see what comes up. But Droid Info, if anyone needs to, just look up Droid Info and this should tell you everything you need to know. So, yep, even the quad cores and all that stuff. All right, let's finish off this video because it's gone on for too long. Um, I just want to try Geekbench really quickly. All right, the scores are in, folks. Here we have a Galaxy A50 with that right there. And here we have our Note 10, and that is the score right there. There you go. Now, with that in mind, that should give you a good indication of the sheer power of this thing. All right, here we go. Start trial. Let's... Ah, uh, well, it works. I'm not good at this. This is on the default settings as well, but uh, yeah, it seems to um seems to just be a little bit laggy. Well, there you go. It can play Minecraft, so. I hope that's helpful for anyone. Look at the quality of it. There we go. I fixed that. Uh, even the S10 clone actually was faster than this. Uh, the buildings are just like... <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, it, that's... Uh, it, well... It's playable. Oh, oh, it's getting faster. My God. Oh. Okay, I think you all get the point now. Uh, this thing will not do any gaming. It might do some emulation, but that's probably about it. Anything else is not going to run like full speed at all. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, that was uh, that was a fun test. All right. So even though that took me quite a long time, that's probably going to seem like nothing for you guys. So um, I just wanted to demonstrate gaming on this thing, and well, there you go. So now I want to tear this device down. Now usually I do a tear down in a separate video, but I'm going to include it in this one. I know it's gone on long enough. This video is just way too long. Um, but I wanted to cover everything that I could in this one video. Um, timestamps will be in the description, of course. But I'm going to go ahead and take this apart. I haven't taken the photos yet, so hopefully they don't kill any of the cameras or anything. But I just want to see the, you know, the layout of inside of it. What does it look like? All that sort of good stuff. So let's switch this off. And that's it. Our cloud friend is off. All right, let's dissect it. All right, here we go. We are inside the device and there it is. It's a 3000 milliamp hour battery, which is actually quite surprising. I am genuinely impressed by that because I was not expecting a 3000. I mean, it might not be a true 3000 milliamp hour battery, but that's still much better than some of the ones that we've got before. That's like 1800 and all that sort of stuff. In saying that, though, the battery level did die quite quickly on this, so... Yeah, so be it. And it's just soldered into place just there, so nothing we can do about that. Let's take the bottom plastic off first and see if we can see the fingerprint scanner or anything like that. Yeah, I'm going to say there's no optical fingerprint sensor because there would be something just here to indicate that, but there is nothing. There's just a flex cable that goes from this to here. I mean, I can lift up the battery ever so slightly, but I don't think there's going to be any, anything under there. Okay. Yep, there we go. That proves everything. So there's no optical fingerprint sensor. It is unfortunately just a fake one, just an on-display one, which didn't even work. So that's fair. Our bottom board here is just the Type-C USB, the microphone, the speaker, and that's pretty much it. Coin-style vibration motor. 
nothing special. All right, you can also see the S Pen just in here. So if we pull this out, pulling it out like that, and there's a little tiny magnet just up here, which senses when the pen goes in, and that's pretty much it. So nothing special there. Let's concentrate up here and see the uh, triple camera setup. This will be fun. And also I want to see the uh, front camera as well. So that's really interesting. All right, so that was a bit fiddly, but I managed to get the top housing off, and there is our single camera unit in there. This here also has a sticker underneath it. It's just a yellow sticker for the dual tone flash, but then this one here actually has the flash underneath it. It's just up there. Now the loudspeaker is this tiny little one here. So that could be emitting some sort of sound, but yeah, there you go. All right, it's time to see what this looks like under here. And that's it. So it's just the cutout in the actual LCD and you can just see right through it. That's how the camera works. It's pretty simple. Also a note that there's actually a metal construction in here, which is pretty good. You've got a plastic outer and then a metal construction inside of it, which explains the, uh, the heaviness to it. And there's the S-Pan mechanism there. So when that gets detected, it just sends it straight to the board and that's it. Easy done. Okay, so I'm at a bit of a crossroad here. I can't get underneath the board because of this connection here, uh, which I just poked with a screwdriver, but that's okay. Uh, that is probably the digitizer or something because the flash is just like that. At this point in time though, it's looking like I cannot progress any further because like everything is just soldered straight to the board. The S Pen connected, the volume flex, everything like that is just straight up soldered to the board. And I, if I damage anything, then I can't obviously turn it back on and uh, do the camera test and all that sort of stuff. So um, I'm going to just put it back together. At least we've had a look at it. At least we know what the camera is, which is just a little guy just there. So that's all right. And yeah, there's just a cutout in the LCD for it. So that's pretty interesting though. But yeah, I'm going to go ahead and just put it all back together and see if it works. And as we can see here, we have jumped uh, a couple of weeks, I think, from when I last was filming because uh, I've been kind of busy. But I've got back to it. It works. It still works. It's functional, which is good. Because now I can finish off this long ass review and tell you guys what I think about this device. Even though I've probably already voiced my opinions, I'm going to voice them again. So for $200 Australian, or 150 US or thereabouts, this is what you will... All right, no worries. This is what you will get off Wish. And of course, you can buy a number of different phones from many different manufacturers, Oppo, Nokia, Xiaomi, or however you pronounce it. And there's several other different offerings that you can get for 150 USD. That's gonna be a lot better than this device. While this looks and, you know, does feel quite nice and all that sort of stuff. It is running pretty poor specs, not suitable for gaming. Cameras aren't too bad. General performance is, mm, and as a daily driver, definitely not. The 3000 milliamp hour battery that's in this though is a bit of a bonus. Wasn't expecting that to be in here. Um, and just the actual hole punch camera. I'm kind of pleased with that. I just didn't think that would actually be an option. And as we've seen in the teardown and all that sort of stuff, that's actually there just to cut out in the LCD, but it's still there, which is what matters. Okay, stop making noise. Yeah, look, as I've said, there's just, there's a number of pros and cons with this. Obviously, if you're gonna go onto Wish and buy a phone, that's straight away something that you just don't wanna do. You just don't do that. I do this for the whole entertainment and the whole fun of this, you know, just to say that I bought this off Wish and, you know, there you go. I've played around with it and stuff. Don't use this as your daily driver or anything. There are plenty of YouTube videos out there, plenty of articles online about budget phones and which ones are going to be recommended for your requirements, what you need as a daily driver phone. If you are tight for cash and, you know, you've only got 150 USD to spend, you can get a reasonably specced phone for about 150 US. So I definitely advice to look into this. This one is just pure novelty. If you want to just say, hey, look, I bought this Note 10 off Wish, like I am doing currently, then you may do that. But otherwise, yeah, it's just stay away from it. Stay away from it. Probably a, probably a very good idea. What could we do on it? We could game at like 5 FPS. Uh, <laughs> that's a start.
So in all that rambling mess of a video that's went for almost 50 minutes, here is the spec list right here of everything that I can see on this device. Uh, this is as best as I can, to my knowledge, describe the specs of this device. For the money, I definitely didn't get something worth the money, that's for sure. As I've been saying, the whole novelty of this was the main thing. The main thing was the novelty, I guess. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this now. It will probably just sit on the shelf of all my other clones that I have to have a look at. I, have, I do have plenty more to have a look at, but this one was just one that I've seen and really wanted to have a look at and tear it down and I've done all that. In that regards, uh, stay tuned. If you've recently subscribed to this channel due to the P30 Pro clone video that I put out, thank you very much for subscribing. I do appreciate it. Existing subscribers, um, thank you for sticking around and all that sort of stuff. If you like this tech stuff, you know, that's great. If you don't, you know, fair enough. It's not for everyone. But I'm sorry that I do ramble and make long videos. This is just a part of what I do. And, you know, hopefully I'm going to try and change that in the future. But for now, I'm trying my hardest. I'm trying. I think we are finally done. Everything is done. Thank you very much for watching. If you managed to sit through this entire video, thank you very, very much. I do appreciate it. If not, and you've just skipped through, that is okay. And if you're just hearing me ramble this, that's okay. No worries. That's fair. Phone's doing random stuff. That is all right. All right, everyone. Thank you again for watching. I do appreciate it very much. And I will see you all in the next video, which is probably going to be either sneakers or tech. I'm not quite sure. It'll be one of the two. One of the two. But um, let me know what you think of this device down in the comments below. And of course, be good people. Take care. And I'll see you all in the next one. If you like this content, feel free to leave a like or a dislike if you didn't. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you all in the next video.